former president of our great republic, and soon to be reinstated president of our great country. Her Excellency Mrs. Lodina Mahama, Excellency Professor Nana Jane Upoku Ajiman, <laughs> running mate of the great National Democratic Congress's flag bearer and the next Vice President of our great republic. The Honorable Mr. Samuel Ofuzuan Pofu, Chairman of our great National Democratic Congress. Honorable Mr. Johnson Asiedun Ketia, the mosquito. Honorable members of the Council of Elders, led by our senior brother, Alaji Mahama Idrisu. Our parliamentary leadership, regional, district, and constituency officials, members of the clergy, members of the media, food soldiers, I'm reminded, and all the other distinguished individuals, comrades, brothers, and sisters, good evening. On the 23rd of October last year, I was given the honor and privilege to chair a committee with the mandate to draft a manifesto that captured the hopes, needs, and aspirations of the good people of this country. Excellencies, comrades, brothers, and sisters, I am happy and humbled at the same time to stand before you this evening to declare that the mission that was assigned to us in October last year has been accomplished. <clears throat> we have produced a document whose philosophy is not only grassroots based, people oriented, inclusive and bottom up, but more importantly, a winning document. Our manifesto is based on reliable, valid, and verifiable data. Time will not allow me to present a detailed summary of the manifesto we prepared or even to explain its philosophy and methodology. However, we, my colleagues and I, will submit a full report to the party providing details of the processes and strategies we adopted in the preparation of this document by the end of this month. We believe that this will be of great value 
to our great party in the preparation of his manifestos in the future. Excellencies, comrades, at this stage, I pay tribute to the many remarkable individuals who comprised the manifesto team, and especially our tireless secretariat. We were fortunate to have an incredible combination of subject matter expertise, grassroots, political, economic, and administrative competence, and sheer commitment to the party and to our country. Comrades, as the chairman has indicated, and the general secretary has also reiterated, let me emphasize that the strategy we took to craft this document was deliberate, was conscious. It wasn't as a result of our inability to think. It wasn't as a result of the fact that we did not have individuals who were competent enough, as some others have alleged. My brothers and sisters, we believed that if we need to practice democracy, we need to extend whatever we do, especially in terms of preparing a social contract between our political party and the good people of Ghana with serious consultations. As you know, in the preamble of our constitution, 1992 constitution, the number one tribute we give is to the almighty God. Second tribute is to the good people of Ghana because we recognize that the sovereign will of the people determine the authority and power of whichever government we establish. For this purpose, in order to craft the manifesto, you remember that we requested every constituency, every district, every region to submit proposals, memoranda, and whatever opinions individuals had to the party secretariat by December 7th, 2019. In addition to these requests, we also had to interface with most of the civil society organizations that have been mentioned and represented here. We also interfaced with individuals who had specific concerns that needed to be brought to the attention of the Manifesto Committee and in general to the National Democratic Congress. You would also remember that before the Manifesto Committee was inaugurated on October 23rd last year, the flag bearer had established working groups working on the economy, infrastructure, education, health, all aspects of our lives. On the, on the National Democratic Party side, standing committees had also been established that were charged with the responsibility of doing the same thing, looking through our body politics and determining the kinds of problems we were facing as a country and craft solutions. These working groups provided reports to the manifesto committee, and in addition to those reports, they met with us, they made oral presentations, and gave us the kind of information that eventually we put together to constitute the manifesto that we are here to launch today. My brothers and sisters, having collated all the information from the district, from the regions and the constituencies, and having met the various representatives of civil society organizations and individuals, the next project was to synthesize all these documents, papers, ideas, proposals, memoranda, into a draft 
manifesto document. In the process of doing that, we had at the back of our minds the fact that in the past, we had prepared huge manifestos that nobody really read. So in the collective wisdom of the manifesto committee, we decided to categorize the documentation, the needs, hopes, aspirations, and problems of our brothers and sisters in this country into six thematic areas. Theme one, titled Fixing the Economy and Uniting Against Poverty. Under this theme, all the economic issues, all the economic problems, all the economic proposals are listed here in the manifesto that will soon be launched. The second theme was promoting human development. Human development encompasses all the problems in education, in health, and the other social sectors. Theme three, providing infrastructure for growth. Under this theme, we have several interesting and valuable sustainable programs. The biggest of them is, have you forgotten? The big push. The fourth theme, creating sustainable and decent jobs. Ejumapa. We've christened it Ejumapa because we are differentiating between Ejumapa and Ejumaboni. We want our people to have decent and sustainable jobs, jobs that will give them personal and familial satisfaction, from which they will derive decent income to support their honorable and distinguished families. Theme five, good governance, anti-corruption, and accountable government. Under this theme, we have a big anti-corruption project christened the big, no, the sting. So if you intend to engage in any corrupt activities under this manifesto, please look elsewhere. There isn't space for you. <laughs> Theme number six, deepening international relations and foreign affairs. Under this theme, we commit ourselves to the principles and ideals of the United Nations, the principles and ideals of African Union, the principles of, and ideals of ECOWAS, and we indeed intend to take advantage of the after that was recently headquartered right here in Ghana, in Accra. With these six teams, we appointed individuals who were responsible for crafting the kinds of programs and policies that should go under each of the themes. And these individuals were responsible for giving us the kind of information you see in the document that is about to be launched. We've already indicated that the conscious effort to get the involvement of the citizens of Ghana in the preparation of this social contract, let's be clear in our minds that the manifesto is a social contract between the National Democratic Congress and the good people of the Republic of Ghana. And therefore, it would have been unpardonable not to have sought the views, concerns, worries, fears, hopes, and aspirations of the good people of this country. We are cementing the social contract through democracy. That's what we eventually culminate in this document that we are about to launch today. My brothers and sisters, the fact that I'm the chairman of the committee doesn't mean that I, as an individual, 
produced this document. There was a team of 21 individuals. And I would want at this point to request those individuals who served with me on this August adventure to stand when I mention your name and be recognized appropriately. With all due respect, may I first call on our sister, Professor Nana Yenopoko Ajiman, who Let me, let me, let me emphasize one point. Let me emphasize just one point. She led the team that prepared the section on human development in the document we are going to be mentioning. And as a sign of a good a responsible citizen. Even when she was named running mate and outdoor, she continued to attend our meetings. Not too many of us would have done that. <laughs> Professor George Udro, former Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Madam. So, Professor Drew, are you some? Oh, you are there, Professor Drew. <laughs> Ambassador Spio Gabra. <laughs> Professor Opuni Esiama. You are here. <laughs> Professor Stephen Kendi. <laughs> Professor Stephen Kendi. Are you here? Dr. Alassan Yakubu. <laughs> the Honorable Nana Oye. She served as secretary to the committee, and I do not believe that you slept over the past two weeks. You will get your reward in heaven. Honorable Mavis Ama Frimpong. Where is she? Oh, you are here. Okay, good. Miss Benedicta Lassie. She's there somewhere. Okay. Mr. Alex Mould. <laughs> Ambassador Sam P. Yali. Mr. Sebastian De. It's there. Mr. Napoleon Po. Napo, are you here somewhere? Mr. Michael Ni Abi. You see here somewhere. Al Aji Haruna Rashid, the director of research. He's not here. Mr. Prosper Puetu. Mr. Peter Otukono. <laughs> Mr. Guzitano and Mr. Trichie Upuku are all members of this uh, are all members of this committee, but they could not join us this evening. My brothers and sisters, we thank you so much for allowing us to undertake this exercise on your behalf. We believe that we are leaving you with a manifesto that is probably the best any political party could have produced. There are several individuals who worked in our working groups and in the standing committees and subcommittees 
there are too many to acknowledge here. But I wish to say that Ghana and the National Democratic Congress extend their greetings and sincerest appreciation to you. Thank you so much. May the good Lord continue to bless our homeland Ghana and also our National Democratic Congress. We wish you success.